Hi guys, this video is for anyone who still needs to either select or photograph your personal artifacts. So let me explain. I'm going to explain everything I can about how to select it, the do's and don'ts about how to photograph it, and set you up with what you need. So let's get into this. Here's the agenda of what I'm going to talk about. The uh, First I'm going to uh, go over the objective as well as the rubric for how I'm grading you on this particular part of the assignment. Next, I'm going to review the kind of rules about selecting the artifact, as well as the do, do's and don'ts about how to photograph it. Third, uh, after I do that, it's going to be time for you to take your photos. That's when you pause the video, take your photos. And then once you come back, I'm going to give you a prompting question so that you can write a short description about what your artifact is and how it's meaningful to you. I'm going to also, also show you how to submit both your artifact and what you wrote about it onto Schoology. And then I'm going to wrap this up with some previews and reminders about what to expect the next time we meet. The materials you're going to need are on the bottom, bottom right side. It's your phone, your personal artifact, a desk lamp, and a wall with solid color, preferably white. If you don't have a desk lamp uh, anywhere around the house that you can move around, I'm also going to be showing you how to take a picture using the light coming in from a window. You can still get really good results from that, so long as you use a wall as your background to crop out any, any noise that you don't want. The objective here is to photograph a meaningful object with good lighting to produce a quality reference image. And once you do that, you're also going to write a brief description of the object and how it's meaningful to you. The visual arts, visual and performing arts standard that this covers is to use multiple approaches to begin creative endeavors. A reference image and creating your own reference image is a really powerful way to begin and set you up for creating uh, images of your own design. This is the rubric for the assignment you're turning in and how I'm grading you. There's three things I'm looking for. First, does your photo show both your hand and the artifact against a white backdrop with strong lighting? The way you can tell that there's strong lighting is if there's very dark shadows, okay? Trust me, it's much easier to draw uh, with, with an image with strong shadows, strong lighting, okay? Second thing I'm looking for, does your photo show clear form shadows and a good balance between light and dark areas? Meaning, if most of your hand is in shadow and it's dark, then that's not balanced. You want there to be a good balance where there's highlights and there's shadows, okay? Third, have you written briefly to describe what your artifact is and how it's meaningful to you? Okay, so those are the three criteria I'm looking for in terms of what you're turn turning in. These are the rules for selecting your artifact. It wants to first represent something meaningful to you. The bullet points there shows uh, a couple options. It's not requirements, okay? Something could be meaningful to you in terms of your heritage. It shows something about your heritage. The, art, the object you choose can represent something about your family. You know, it could remind you of someone. Maybe someone gave it to you as a gift. It might even represent something you struggle with, okay? It, it could also represent something you hope for. And those are just a couple ways, only a couple ways that something can be meaningful to you. There's an infinite amount of ways something can, can be meaningful to you, okay? So it's just some suggestions there, not the rules. Second rule here, it can be, uh, your object needs to be broken down into basic forms. So we're talking, I can easily look at this, and when I draw it, I could break it down into a box shape, a cylinder shape, a sphere, or maybe even a cone shape, okay? Third, you need to be able to hold the object in one hand because you're photographing both the object and your hand along with the beginning part of your wrist, okay? So it's, it wants to be small enough, nothing huge. In terms of the photo, we do want to use a white backdrop of some kind, okay? In our case, since the, this past week it's been really overcast, we can't, you, there's, it's too cloudy to use sunlight. We're going to use a white wall or just a solid colored wall as a background, okay? Second rule, you want clear form shadows. The important thing here is a lot of, a lot of students have been uh, making the mistake of trying to create shadows with their object onto the wall to create a, a cast shadow. 
that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for form shadows. That's the that's the shadow that's on your hand on the object itself, not the shadow that's being cast onto any other surface. Okay, it's the dark areas on your hand and on your object. Third, you want you want to have that balance between dark and light areas. Fourth, both your hand and your object are clearly visible, and it's got to be your whole hand, not just a few fingers. Let's go over some of these do's and don'ts. On the left side is what you should do. On the right side is what you don't want to do. Do position your wrist and forearm farther away from the camera. Don't position your wrist and forearm like you see on the right, okay? When your forearm's really close to your camera lens, it creates this like tree, it's this effect like almost like you're looking up at a tree and then it's like a tree trunk. It looks weird, <laughs> okay? So we don't want to do that. Get your forearm and wrist far away so you don't pull perspective with your with your forearm like that. Next, you do want to position yourself close to your light source, whether it's a desk lamp or a window, okay, so that you're producing strong shadows. On the right, what you don't want to do is position yourself far away from the light source because that'll get you weak shadows. If you notice, just take a look at the, the difference between the left and right image. The left image has really strong, very dark shadows, okay, because I'm close to that light source. The second image, I'm very far away. In that case, it's a window, right? The light coming in from a window. And the shadows there are not as dark. They're mostly in the light gray area. And trust me, if I were to try and draw that, especially for people beginning to shade and getting familiar with that skill, it's infinitely harder, okay? Way harder to draw with weak shadows than with dark ones. So get yourself close to that to that light source. Next, do pose your hand so that many of your fingers are visible. What I don't want you to do is what you see on the right side, where you're hiding most of your fingers behind your object, okay? Don't pose your hand with no visible fingers. It, it's not interesting, <laughs> okay? It's not an interesting shot, and it's, it's kind of boring to draw just like one part of your thumb and palm like that, okay? It's kind of like you're playing at being a hand model, all right? You want to show some interesting angles, some interesting grip, and actually pose your hand in a good way. Next, if you're working with a box-shaped object, like a book, right? I do want you to pose that book or box-shaped object with three visible faces. The temptation is to do what's, what you see on the right, all right, where you're posing that object with just one face or two faces visible. Especially if it's a book, you just kind of show the front of the cover. Please don't do that. It's a treat it like a box-shaped object and show at least three of its faces. It's a little bit clearer to see here. You can see the same example with what we looked at before. On the right, you see only two faces of that box, whereas on the left, you see three faces, and it makes for a way more interesting shot of that object. Okay, so if it be it a box or a book, you want to treat it the same way get more get more of the faces of that uh, book in the shot, okay? Really important here, do pose your hand and object away from the wall or backdrop. You wanna be about six to 12 inches away from the wall so you don't cast a shadow onto it. If you see on the right side, my hand is touching the wall, okay? And it's casting a shadow onto the wall. We don't want that. If you find yourself with your hand touching the wall, unstick it from the wall please and take a step away <laughs> please 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 you might have to reposition your light okay but we don't want to cast shadows on the wall it's too distracting and that's not the shadows we're looking for we're looking for the shadows like you see on the left side we're looking for the shadows that form the dark areas on your hand and on the object not on the wall do include your whole hand and part of your wrist if you find yourself doing something like on the right side where you only see a couple fingers and you're cropping out a lot of your hand, move your camera away, right, farther away, zoom out so you see part of your wrist and your whole hand along with the object. Do take multiple photos with multiple light angles. If you notice here, I have the same grip and the same angle with the object, but the light angle is changing because I'm moving the desk lamp around. Okay, you have very different lighting conditions in each shot. That's what you want to aim for. Experiment with multiple light angles. 
What I don't want you to do is just take multiple photos with the same light angle. All right. You won't really learn. You won't really learn a whole lot there. You will learn a whole lot about how, like, the condition of light, like the the affect of it, when you move your desk lamp around and change up the light angles. Lastly, please do be respectful, appreciate, and be curious about your classmates' artifacts. Okay, what I don't want you to do is say or type anything non-constructive about your classmates' artifact or the, their choice of what they, what their object is. So instead of saying something like, hey, why would you choose that? Say something like, hey, that's really cool. Could you tell me how that's meaningful to you? It's a way more constructive way of engaging with each other in a respectful way, okay? Especially since we're starting to work with more personal materials. These are personal choices. We're talking about meaning. You don't know how something's meaningful to someone, okay? It might be mundane and, and weird to you, but man, like you, could, you gotta be respectful in these situations. Okay, so those were all the do's and don'ts. I know there was a lot, okay? <laughs> but um, you can go ahead and review the video if, if that's what you need to uh, get a better sense of what each of those requirements are. What you wanna do is take multiple photos with different light angles. Amongst the photos you take, I want you to choose one final photo that fulfills all the requirements to submit, okay? It's gotta have strong shadows, it's got to have your whole hand and your wrist visible. Object needs to be broken, be able to be broken down into basic forms and all that stuff, okay? So it's a good time to pause the video now. You can rewind if you need to, to look, out, look over all the do's and don'ts again. But pause the video now, go take your photo, and when you come back, we're going to be ready to write up your description. All right, welcome back. So now that you take in your photo of your artifact, hopefully it's got really good lighting, really strong shadows, okay? That's the main thing we're looking for there. Now it's time to write a brief description by answering the following questions. What is your artifact and how is it meaningful to you? Who or what does it remind you of? How does it make you feel? One thing I forgot to do, so let me address that now. If you are working with window lighting, I do need to show you how that works. Okay, so let's rewind a bit. I gotta switch my microphone to my headset to do this, so the sound quality is gonna be a little worse for a second. So say you don't have a desk lamp like this. Okay, that's entirely possible. And you only have your window light to deal with. Here's my window with a covering on it. Even if you're working with a window, all you really need is a window that's that's on a wall that where, where there's a wall, there's a corner right here, and there's a wall you can use as a background like this. So give me a moment. So say this is my personal object, right? You wanna point your camera parallel to the wall right and hold your object like this if you'll notice my shadows are pretty weak here what I need to do is position myself take a step back so I'm this is my window here I'm very close to the light source but I'm not taking a picture of the window okay you want to angle your camera so it's pointing to the wall and the object as well as your hand the window itself is out of the frame but I'm close to the light source so that I can have as strong a shadow as I can on my hand and the object itself, okay? The closer I am to the window, the more distinct my shadow should get. Tip for you, okay? If you're using this method, you might get too much dark area around your palm if you hold it like this. You're probably gonna wanna twist your fingers around in a way so that as much of your palm, or, or a good amount of your palm, it receives light as well from the window, okay? common mistake here is to point your camera and include a lot of noise in the background. Your camera wants to face the wall directly. Okay, and just to repeat, if you find yourself doing this, trying to look for that shadow, that cast shadow, not what we're looking for. Step away from the wall, 
get your hand close to the window and take a clean shot with all your whole hand and your wrist visible. All right, so that's how you use window light to create shots. And try a couple different poses here. Twist your arms around or your hand around. Look at how the, the different shadows work. And that's how you use the window. Okay. So we're back here. We're writing a description of your uh, personal artifact by answering the, these, this question over here. Okay. Once you've done that, let me show you how to submit this onto Schoology. In Schoology, under the worksheets, you're going to find Worksheet 13, Final Artifact Photo. All right. There's a way for you to submit both the, um, the photo as well as what you wrote about it in the same submission. So what you want to do is go to your Schoology, navigate to, say, Period 1 Drawing, right? Depending on your period, it's going to be different. But under Worksheets, you want to open up the expand the purple folder. Worksheet 13, Final Artifact, is way down here. Click on that. And if you're submitting on your computer, this is what it'll, it'll look like. You could click on the Submit Assignment button right here. Oh, my face is in the way. Okay. The Submit Assignment button is right here on the top right. When you click on that, it's going to give you an option to attach a file. When you click on this file button, you could choose a file to attach from your computer. In the comment box right underneath it, that's where you can type in what you wrote as your uh, artifact description. Okay, so that's how you work this on the computer for your Schoology submission. When it comes to working with your phone, which is probably going to be most of your cases, the submission is a little bit different. So let me show you that too. So on your phone, you got your, this is what you're using to take your picture. So it's nice to use this also to submit onto Schoology. What you want to do is open up your Schoology app. Okay, go to your course dashboard, the second tab over here. Find your drawing class period. I'm just going to click on period one for now. Okay. Worksheets, the purple folder. And then click on worksheet 13, final artifact photo. And then over here, you want to go to the third tab on top. It says grades and submissions. See that plus button? That's what you use to submit. Initially, you want to upload, you want to click sub submit, upload submission. And then this, this is important. Don't click on photo because that's going to direct the, the app to try and take a new photo. We don't want that. You've already taken your photo. Okay. Click on file instead. And it should give you an option of what the recent photos in your camera roll to include in there. Okay. So I'm just going to select that one. And then on the phone, you want to send, you see the send button or the submit button? You do want to click that, okay? And then it's going to, that plus sign is going to pop up again. You can then select create text submission, and then you can type your response that describes your artifact there, okay? So if you're working with your phone, you're doing two submissions separately, one of the photo, the other of the text submission. So go ahead, submit onto Schoology, both your photo and your description, under Worksheet 13. And once you do that, here's some preview about what to expect next, next time we meet. We are going to have an in-class discussion about to try and answer this essential question, how do we communicate symbolism? Because you guys chose and photographed personal artifacts. And I think I think you're you guys are smart enough to predict that we're going to draw what you took a picture of, but drawing your hand right and and your personal object artifact in your hand 
on its own, right? No matter how well you draw it, it's not necessarily going to communicate what it means to you. So we, we're going to brainstorm together what are some ways we can communicate that meaning, that symbolism, okay? Reminder for you guys, if any of you still need to supply yourselves and you cannot purchase it, you need to pick it up from Ms. Ishii, she's arranging a final supply pickup very soon. So please get in contact with her, either through Schoology messages or, um, or with email. In either case, make sure you include your period, uh, the period you're messaging from so that she knows where to find you. Okay, arrange a date and time with her that works for both of you. Please, please do that. It's really important. We're going to start working with those color pencils soon. The things that you're going to bring, uh, need to bring next time for a discussion is your, it's basically your phone because your phone's going to have your artifact photo in there and we're going to use that to talk in class together. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next time.